How you doing? My name is Juan Carlos Pena. I'm a student here at Jones Technical Institute. And um, today we're going to be working on a four spool monoblock valve assembly. Um, the tools that I've got laid out for it is a flathead screwdriver, a 13 millimeter, a 17 millimeter wrench, uh, a 532nd Allen wrench, and an 8 millimeter Allen wrench. And that's just so we can undo the caps uh, on here. Uh, I use the screwdriver to pry these little plastic caps off of this. These are put in by the manufacturer to keep dirt, debris, and any other stuff you don't want in your system out. Okay? So, take all these little caps, set them aside. Alright, now, um, here we have uh, the end caps for, for our valves. These are the control levers that we'll actually use to move the valve in or out as we need the flow to go. We've got a P over here. This is where the pump side goes. This is where you would actually be getting your supply of hydraulic fluid through the system. Um, and we've got, we've got a port on the side and a port on the top. And that's just so that in case, you know, wherever you've got to mount uh, this control or this uh, valve body at, you know, in case you can't get a line on the side, you can put it on the top, or if you can't fit it on the top, you can put it on the side. Uh, these really don't matter. You just kind of take these uh, and plug up the port that you're not using. Okay, that's all these are. They got a little O-ring inside of there. Now this one's straight from the manufacturer. It's relatively new. Uh, so we're not gonna, we're probably not gonna find too many discrepancies in here, but it's important to check out these O-rings. Make sure they're still pliable, make sure they're still flexible. Uh, and in good health. If they're dry rotted or flattened out, they're not going to hold the seal and you're going to have a leaking body. All right, uh, the next thing that we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to be removing these caps. I've already taken the ratchet to loosen them, um, but you know, we'll just finish them off. If you've got a T handle Allen wrench, it'll work just as good for this. Uh, the only thing that I have here is a uh, my Allen sockets, so that's what I'm using to make it work. All right, loosen up those bolts. Flip it upside down. Get to these bottom bolts here. Pay close attention to how these uh, caps are installed. It might seem like they can go any uh, any way, especially because it's got other holes drilled on here. Uh, but system won't be operating properly if these caps aren't put on properly. And these here are uh, uh, three-way valves, so that means they can go in, uh, in both directions. And I'll be showing it on the board how these, uh, how these all work together. This is usually set up on a hydraulic system, but today we've got a, we can bring it up with pneumatic. Right, so we've got our supply. This would basically be the pump uh, supplying fluid. In this case, it's supplying air through the system. Okay, we've got a little uh, pressure gauge to make sure we don't blow any lines out. Uh, we've got a, uh, a variable control so we can add or uh, add more pressure to it or take away pressure. So in the case, I'm going to be operating on the lowest um, setting on it. As you can see, here's our mono block valve, four, four spool valve system. Uh, you can see these lines, they're set up to these gas cylinders. Uh, and you have one going to activate and the other one to retract. Okay, and we've got the same hose set up for four different cylinders because we've got four different controls here going on. Um, there's going to go through here, you can activate these levers to move these cylinders as you need. Uh, any of the residual would come out the tank side uh, and just kind of blow off. Okay, so you know these valves. Um, as you as you control these levers, you move one valve to one way. It operates. It operates the flow going down that way. And if you reverse it, it'll go back. Right now, they're in the neutral position. That's their home position. And then the valves that we've got. Let me get up. So we control. Uh, these cylinders using our valve. Oh, there you go. Okay, so this 
kind of shows the, uh, the flow throughout. Okay, so I've got uh, the caps completely off, detent springs exposed. I'm going to pull off these levers. Now to pull these levers off, uh, they they actually you know stick down through and uh, hit the hit the valve actuators here. You can go through and uh, spin these handles off, um, but if you can't get them off, you can see inside where the where the handle leads down in there, and that little that little peg in there has to go in the little hole here. And that's where you actually get your, you know, your your valve to push left or right. All right, so let me get these other four or the other three levers off. We'll go through and start taking the thing apart some more. Now we've got our mono block down to this point. Uh, we can use a couple of different things to pull this out. We can try to pull it out. It might come out on its own. If, uh, if they're not coming out, you might want to use a uh, soft mallet. these little grooves this is where the uh, fluid travels through and um, it provides the power that we need it provides the flow that we need through these valves Obviously a very tight fit. Uh, they're machined to fit in there perfectly. Uh, they've got a very, very light um, film of grease on there. Uh, and at that point, we're kind of down to the bare bones. Um, Now we've got here this little this little housing here is actually where uh, our relief valve is at, and you've got obviously a tensioning spring, pretty stiff spring. You know, so as as uh, pressure as pressure builds up, it'll compress that spring and it'll help relieve the relieve the pressure inside of it. Cap to our valve. Here we go. Here's the actual. All right. So now, once we've taken this apart, we're gonna inspect the actual little valve inside of the uh, inside its casing. There, we're gonna look to make sure that it's not fouled, gunked up, or something. Uh, make sure nothing's built up on it. Uh, ensure that the housing is clear of debris and um, that's still in good operating condition. No mer uh, no scratches on it, no gouges on it. Uh, and then this little cap just kind of goes on there. Okay. And now inside of there, we've got a um, little copper washer. I don't know if I can fish it out right now, but uh, you have to inspect that and make sure that it's in good condition too. Make sure it's not crushed and out of spec. Because uh, you will again get some nasty little leaks on there. All right. So now this has been uh, the full-on disassembly. Uh, next, we're going to get our, uh, our little slide caliper, and we're going to measure the the faces in here. Make sure that um, 
Make sure they're inbound, all equal along the way. Make sure everything's still within spec. And then we're just gonna go through and uh, put it on back together, all right? Okay guys, so we're back. Um, I've already taken down a few of the measurements. I've got a caliper here and a T-gauge. Uh, basically, I'm going to I'm just gonna take this last measurement here. Um, T-gauge, it's got a little screw that tightens down on the, on the little springs inside the handle. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen the screw up a little bit and push down on the T-gauges. Put it inside the mouth here. We're gonna tighten the screw down. So now we've got uh, the T-gauge set to the same size as our orifice there. <clears throat> and then we're gonna take our micrometer, open it up, we're just gonna measure this. Now it's very important that when you're uh, when you're using these tools that you're that you're always zeroing this out when, when it's completely closed. So I just took this measurement here and it looks like we're sitting at five decimal eight two, which is or decimal five eight two, which is exactly uh, the other side of it. That means that we're completely round in there as as it's as it should be. Uh, we've got no warpage in there. I don't see why there would be, but we've got that measured out. Um, so once we take all our measurements, make sure that everything's within spec here. Uh, the only real thing that's left is the reassembly. And if you just follow the video as I took it apart, you should be able to put it back together. Um, we're gonna go through and put uh, all of our caps back on, on in place. We're gonna put our, uh, our ports back in place, put our handles, the valves, um, everything in it. Now, if you're kind of wondering or lose track of how, how everything goes back into the body, uh, if you remember, we had this, uh, the, the valve housing here uh, on the same side as where the levers were. Okay, so if the valve uh, goes in right here, the low relief valve goes right here, that means that the handles are gonna go in right here as well. And if you remember, we had a little bit of a tough time pulling them out. I mean, it was partly because of my slippery hands, but uh, like I said, these are machined to be exactly that size. So you're gonna go through, and I left everything laid out the same way that I had it pulled out, because I mean, these will go right back in their same slot every time. All right, so as you can see, we're gonna put this back on. Uh, we're gonna put all four of them on, then we're gonna put our caps back on here. And after we've got all that set up, we'll set up the, uh, the handles on there and we'll reassemble this uh, relief valve. We'll drop it back in, dropping it back in. You gotta just make sure that the, that the actual valve side is, uh, is facing up. It'll really only fit one way because of uh, the washer on the back side of it, but you know, pay close attention so you don't have to go through and pull this back out. Right, so you put the valve in there, put the tension spring back on it, put the housing back on it, and you would tighten this down. And this right here, this top one, I didn't really go over this, but this is an adjustment bolt. Uh, basically, this side pushes down on that tension spring, so it'll take uh, even less pressure to trip it because it'll already be preloaded. And then this is the adjustment nut here. So once you get it down uh, to where, usually what I'll do is uh, after I tighten down the housing, is I'll tighten it down until where I can feel that feel that screw in there. I'll take my Allen uh, Allen wrench right here. And then I can use uh, my little wrench, my 13 millimeter wrench to just kind of uh, lock it in place. Uh, and usually, you know, you'll have pretty good success, especially if you've got the ratchet on there uh, to hold the adjustment screw before you put it back together. But uh, that's pretty much this uh, valve body in a nutshell. Now I'm just gonna put this back together and um, I'll catch you on this next video.